Did you know the most frequently asked question that we have here? Do solar panels work at night? Hey, uh, <laughs> Yo, it's a long cable, eh, to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome my solar friends to another episode of Solar Advice, where we like to keep energy solutions simplified. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about the piece of equipment that made the whole solar evolution possible, the iconic solar panel. In this video, we are gonna be covering the basics, what they are, how they work, the different types, the sizes. So how does the technology work? Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna keep it very short and basic. If you want to have a deeper understanding on how solar panels work on a science level, I recommend uh, taking a look in the description below as I've added a link. Solar panels are made up of individual cells. Now when the sun produces photons, the photons interact with these cells and the cells create a small charge. Now that might not sound like a lot, but because you have multiple cells in a panel, this then creates a larger charge. And if you have multiple panels, then this creates a lot more energy. The cells are made of a silicon sand, uh, not to be confused with silicone. These are then melted together to create the surface of the panel. The panels themselves are encased in an aluminium frame. Uh, this helps to make them lighter, although I picked one of these things up and it's not light at all. So on the back of your panels, you will have a positive and negative wire. Uh, these will have an MC4 clip attached to the either end of those. This makes it very easy to connect your panels together to form your array. The panels then get mounted onto the roofs and these use brackets. The brackets can be fitted onto tiles or hooked onto tiles and they can also be mounted onto roof types such as IBR roofs, uh, flat roofs and corrugated roofs. But the one roof that you can't mount panels onto is the thatch roof uh, because, well, it's flammable and it's also illegal, interestingly enough. Okay, so that's a rough explanation on how they work. Now, if you want to know more about the science behind it, just check out the link in the description. Now your solar panels are producing clean energy. So now what? Uh, this is not the only piece of the puzzle. You also need an inverter. Uh, the job of the inverter is to convert that DC energy that you get uh, from the solar array into AC energy that you're gonna be using in your home. So if you want to know a little bit more about solar inverters and how they work, we have made a few videos on this. And after this video, go and check them out. Okay, now you understand how a solar system works. Let's move on to the different types of solar panels that you get. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be sticking to the main types of solar panels that you commonly find. Now you get various types of solar panels, such as foldable, thin film, bifacial, and various others. Today, we're gonna to talk about the popular monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar panels. Let's start with monocrystalline. Monocrystalline are the more efficient of the two. Uh, these are cut from a single crystalline silicon ingot. In terms of manufacturing, this is the most wasteful process as the corners are cut from these to form that distinct shape that you see on the panel. These panels perform better in high heat and in lower light conditions, uh, making them basically the best option out of the two. They do produce closer to their rated output. They also come in black, which in my opinion look a lot nicer, but however, they are a bit more expensive. Now onto polycrystalline solar panels, the iconic blue ones that you've probably seen on those rooftops. These are manufactured by molding the silicon together and they also are the cheaper of the two. However, they are less efficient. Now this is due to the imperfections um, caused by the manufacturing process. If you look closely enough, you will be able to see the different blue colorations. So an easy way to differentiate the two, the monocrystalline panel come in black, they are more efficient and they're more expensive, and the polycrystalline, they're least expensive, they come in blue and they're least efficient. So now we've covered the main types. So let's go on to sizing. Now, panel sizes have increased year on year. So to put this in perspective, our most popular panel just a couple of years ago was 235 watt panels. And today, just a couple of years later, we're shipping off 445 watt panels. It's a massive jump. 
The size of the panel will be determined by the actual roof type that you have. If you are in South Africa, then you will want to be facing those panels north to get the maximum sun during the day. With regards to sizing your array, you will be restricted by your inverter. Um, this is something called your max PV input. This is displayed on the inverted data sheet and is typically shown in wattage. So a quick example, uh, if your inverter has a max PV input of 6,500 watts and you have a 445 watt panel, all you do is divide the max PV input by the size of the panel. And in this example, it's rounded to around 14 panels. I'll be doing an in-depth guide on how to size your array in another video. Now on to buying. Panels, they've never been cheaper, and I don't see this trend changing anytime soon. They're also getting bigger and bigger, and again, because we're going towards that green energy status, I see this being a popular trend. With that being said, there is one thing to be aware of. If you buy panels today with a particular inverter, my advice would be to max out that inverter because the panels that you buy today might not be available in a year or two. Alternatively, what you can do is get an inverter that has multiple MPPTs, such as the hybrid inverter, which has two. Then what you can do is max out the one side of the MPPT with a particular size inverter on that side. And then later on, then you can choose another size panel and you can max out that MPPT. Now it might sound easy to connect those panels and put them up yourself, but I highly recommend getting a professional to do the job for you. Okay guys, that about wraps it up. We've covered some solid basics and I hope you get some value out of this video and build up that confidence to start your solar journey. And as always guys, if you have any questions, please comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. We're going to go through what they are. <laughs> the cells are cut from a single crystalline sing... Uh, well, it's so... Well, actually it's the other way, it's kind of like... Um, smashed it! <laughs>